So we are going to record it just because there are a couple who are absent and we don't want them to miss uh, the graduation details and all that stuff. So just so you guys know, that's why we are recording it. Um, but alrighty, let's just jump in. So today, the three main things, topics we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to talk first about your guys' mock circles. Uh, we're going to talk about what happens after this summer program. So post, thank you, thanks, Shido. Uh, post YRP and also about graduation. Yay. Okay. So let's start with your mock circles first. All right. Let's just put that over here so I can see. Okay. Um, you guys can unmute yourselves if you guys want to talk or if you guys have any questions. Um, just feel free to jump in, or if you want to do, you know, the little hand, the hand emoji, you guys could do that as well. Um, but today we are not going to like tell you guys individualize how you guys did. Um, but so we're just going to talk about it in, in general. Um, but we are going to ask some of you guys to share your thoughts on it, um, <clears throat> to share your experience, how you prepared and Perhaps even some of you guys can give some tips to the rest of the group on, on things that we need to improve on. Um, but first off, we do want to congratulate every one of you. You all did a wonderful job and we are very proud of each and every one of you. I know it was a, a very fast six weeks and you guys managed to be able to capture um, all the all the material that all the instructors gave throughout these whole six weeks, and that's very amazing. So you guys should be proud of yourselves. Um, so let's talk about the pros first. Uh, most of you guys, in general, most of you guys did such a great job um, in understanding Sorry, the. Hello, I don't mean to interrupt. It's just I'm not sure if you're changing or switching your screen. Does everyone else also just see the graduation screen? Yeah, I just see the big graduation thing. Yeah. Oh, right. Hmm. Uh, me too. The graduation screen. Yeah. How do we do this? Are you sharing your window or your screen? It should be the screen. Let's see. Can you guys see that? No, I think you might need to stop sharing and then share again. Let's try that again. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, she exited the room, right? Oh. Hang on, just a sec. Let me move. No, I'm so here, Shido. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. One minute. I can download it and share it if that. Can you guys see that? Okay, we can see it now. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the heads up, Shido. All right. <clears throat> okay, so the pros, as I was saying, uh, most of you, the, the majority of you did such a great job with the understanding the case. And, it, you know, it was it was evident when you guys introduced yourselves and when you guys introduced your uh, your client, if it was either Angel or Jordan, you guys did such a great job with that. So we are very proud of you guys for um, just knowing the case well, you know, well rounded up. 
Um, the second pro that we saw is the resolution. So um, all, of your re all of your resolutions were also great. We did take a note of everyone's resolution and, and we're glad, you know, it wasn't just one, one uh, agreement, you know, like, oh, well, Angel hits and stabs Jordan. Let's just give him a letter of apology and that's it, right? No, you guys actually did went in depth and you thought it through about the types of resolutions that were fair and reasonable for everyone involved. So, um, Let's see. I do want you guys to share a couple of examples. So let's have uh, Daniela. Daniela, could you share with us your resolution agreement, the one that you and your group came up with? Yeah, so um, we agreed. So I was the, um, the community advocate. So we uh, prioritized like healing with the um individual and the individual didn't really prioritize like letter of apology instead we um talked about moving um morgan and angel away from each other in the classroom having um angel and angel's parents meet with the teacher and then the teacher having uh weekly check-ins with the parents whether that be through like call or email or anything like that to tell the parents how Angel's doing, as well as asking every morning if um, Angel had taken his ADHD medication. And then we also talked, we did one more, but I can't remember it off the top of my head, but that was the three that I remembered. Oh, and that was great. That was great. Thank you, Daniela. Let's ask, let's see, on day two, we had... Is Jennifer here? Jennifer, can you share your resolution agreement? Yeah, so I was the youth advocate for um, my scenario and we had a few resolutions. Our first one was to have a verbal apology as opposed to um, a letter. And then we also said that um, Angel would be suspended for a week from the basketball team until the coach and the counselor felt that there was progress. And then we also had an anger management course and um, weekly meetings with the counselor that would eventually turn into monthly meetings as progress showed. Great, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, let's do one more. Let's have Catherine. Hi. Uh, so for our, sorry, I'm babysitting. For our solution, we had um, anger management courses and then, sorry. And then um, we had, uh, suspension from the basketball team for at least two games and that they would uh, talk to the coach so that they could have better solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, in general, you guys did, you know, you guys did a, a great job with that. The resolutions you, you guys came up with. Um, both Patrick and I and, and Victoria was also um, part of the grading. Um, we thought you, you guys came up with very creative and reasonable agreements for, for Angel. Um, so, you know, good job, good job on that. <clears throat> Let's see, the other thing is each of you does have very individual strengths. Um, so some of you are so great at communicating um when it comes to like negotiating so great job on that and then others some of you others uh the way you present the case you guys also did a great job with that and the other pro we did have a couple of absences 
And this is where it's, you know, it surprised me the most. Um, some of you, we had to call you on spot uh, just to fill in that spot from the other student that was absent. And you guys did such a great job for that too. Um, so thank you. Sometimes that is going to happen in real life. It might be that one of you guys, your, you know, your transportation is not going to be able to make it on time, that we're going to have another student um, in that moment just step up and take your case for them. So um, good job to work under pressure, I guess. I, I guess you could call it like that. Um, so good job on that. Um, Shido, do you, do you want to add anything else? Yeah, I mean, before we move into cons, so hi everyone, Shito. I believe I've met all of you. I am curious about generally, you know, and speak of it as broadly as you like, or, you know, provide examples. I am curious about how you felt the overall experience was for you, because this is your first time doing a mock circle. So I'm sure, you know, everyone had all sorts of feelings about it. So let's just use this also have a chance to just kind of debrief before we go into, you know, areas of improvement that we identified as a group. Um, anyone want to just talk to their experience again of the whole process from when you got the case to when you, you know, closed out the circle? I can see now why Consuelo was calling out on names. So would you like me to call out names as well? Or do we have any brave souls? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah, you, can okay. go. You, you go first. I'll go after. Okay, yeah. Uh, whole experience, start start to end. Um, when I first got the case, I was feeling a little uh, I was feeling a little unsure about things because there was a lot of uh details to balance. Uh, but once I got into contact with uh with uh the victim Jordan Anderson, it was uh it was pretty smooth sailing from there. Uh, the main thing that I learned was that to be successful in these circles, uh, you just have to be prepared. Like the two biggest things I learned, just be prepared and be confident. Uh, as long as you understand all the facts of the case, uh, you have your printouts beforehand, uh, you know all the details, you know what your client's looking for, you know what you're looking for. Uh, and if you can convey that with confidence in the circle itself, you, you can go really far. Those are the two main things I learned. Awesome, thank you, Ethan. And spot on with the being prepared. Because the more prepared you are, even if you've got nerves with public speaking, if you know your content, you can get it across really well. Thank you for sharing that. Who did we have next? Uh, me, James. So when I first uh got briefed the case, I feel when reading the overall uh note, I feel like it was just like a regular like referral, like a school referral. So it wasn't like out of the blue, it wasn't abnormal. I think it was just regular to me because i've seen like so many of these at my own uh, middle school like years ago but getting um in contact and finding ways to repair the harm that's done i think that's something new that i've learned um is getting out of your comfort zone just thinking of ways that not only can help change um the community but also change some ruling that might that can happen um, not just in the present, but also in the future, so that uh, stuff like this doesn't like happen again. So I think the main thing that, that I learned was just getting out of your comfort zone, like getting to talk with your uh, with your client on a personal level, not like too too personal, but like getting like a understanding of what what happened to them and like what they were going through at the time, and like also thinking of ways um, that don't just help them heal but also others heal in the process awesome thank you so yeah kind of also along those same lines of um expecting the unexpected in certain ways right and being prepared for that um anyone else had similar experiences or different experiences i had a similar experience with the communication aspect upon first getting the uh case files, they were pretty general and gave a, you know, sort of unbiased view of what it could. But then as a youth advocate, I was supposed to advocate on behalf of, behalf of Angel during the scenario. And I um, asked them to answer the questions that were sent to us. But I think also coming up with your own questions or um, statements you want them to know would be helpful in the future. 
Okay, cool. Thank you. Same themes I'm hearing a lot of, which is just be prepared, be prepared, be prepared. Um, so thank you. Let me ask you a different question about your overall experience. Was anyone surprised with how they did once the circle is over, you know, in hindsight, any surprises? You all pretty much did as you expected you would do or? I think for me, like, um, like these types of circles, they kind of like, give me like an idea of like what counseling would feel like because I, I never had personal counseling myself so I feel like these circles were like remind me of like bigger counseling sessions so I think like I've I've done what I think I would have done with the same preparation or more yeah thank you so much for bringing that up um because you're right in a way it's kind of connecting with your youth right um consuela will talk about this later in terms of how we also identify the person that we're representing but that's exactly right it's kind of trying to create create a human connection and that can be because this is a person you don't know that can sometimes be intimidating i heard someone say that they were initially a little bit nervous about contacting that person but they did eventually and that was something that surprised them so yeah I want to encourage you as we talk through the next set of, you know, areas of improvement, like Consuelo said, this is applies to the broader group, but I want to encourage you to also use this as an opportunity to learn. We weren't expecting anyone to be complete rock stars and know how to perform in a circle, like, you know, without even thinking about it. Every circle you do is going to teach you something different, right? So once Consuela starts talking about some of the areas of improvement, I'd like for you all to kind of raise your hand or interrupt to also contribute your own personal challenge. And if you overcame it, how did you do so? All right, Consuelo, I think I am ready to hand it back to you. All right, thank you, Shido. Um, I do wanna do just a little quick, a little quick poll. So if you contacted your referred here or client um, via email, just could you put in your hand emoji? Interesting, okay. Okay, and everyone else, your preferred method was to call or text? Okay, that's interesting. Um, so I do want I do want to speak on this just a little. So the ones who communicated to their referred youth or victim, how how was that process? Do you think that was that was smoother for you? You were you able to capture um, like all the details of the case or did that just complicate you know every day you had to gather new information how was that for me I think that communicating with the uh, referred youth beforehand made it easier so that there were no surprises Sizes during the actual circle and even if I had to do more day-to-day -day before the circle I think the circle went a lot smoother because of previous communication okay thank you let's see Ethan I do I do see you have your hand up still do you have um want to share something or it was oh, just no, I was just raising my hand to the previous okay. question, but I, I could share something uh, in terms of uh, the communication. I, I set up a I set up like an appointment to call through through email. So I didn't really communicate through email, but uh, I felt like it was a lot more efficient to to actually speak with the person because uh, there wasn't like a lot of problems with uh, for me after that. I kind of just got all the information I needed in one go. And then I was pretty much prepared for the circle after that. I just had a 20 minute conversation and I had a document where I wrote down all the details I needed. And then uh, I had a pretty thorough understanding of what uh, my my victim was looking for after that. Wow, thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Ethan. Um, Trinity, I do see you have your hand up. Do you want to share something? 
I would. Um, so when I was reaching out to my victim, I made sure to get their side of the story and really dwell into how they felt in the moment, how they felt after, um, just so I can like, get a more feel on, and figure out like how to best understand what they went through and how to best get um, peace for them in that sense. And I just made sure like that we they communicate over text and we did communicate um, during the phone calls, but just so we can understand um, like what happened and how I can try to make the situation a little bit better for them. For sure. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Trinity. Okay. Um, yeah, in, in general, the best method I would say is, well, first off, just send them an, an email or a text and be like, hey, you know, my name is so-and-so, I am going to be your advocate, what time works best for you, and then once, you know, they give you a time, um, just pick up the phone and call them, that would probably, probably be the best um, method for you to contact them, just, just for yourself, so you can, you know, grasp all the information all at once, and if, and if you need any follow-up information, you, you know, you can continue to reach out to them, um, but okay, we're going to now go over the cons. And in this section, like Shido said, we do want you guys to share some tips um, for the rest of the group. Um, so let's start with the first one. The first con that we noticed, we didn't notice this, you know, in every mock circle, but a couple of you um, referred to your referred youth or your victim as my client, right? So let's let's just have an example. Let's say you go to the doctor's office, in, uh, you're sitting down, you're waiting for the doctor, and then the doctor comes in and he is like, hi, patient number 1,675, how are you? How do you think that makes you feel? Not so, not so good, right? Like you want the doctor to be like, Hi, Consuelo, how are you? You know, you want it to, to be personalized. So it goes the same with your referred youth and your victim. You want to use their name as much as possible um, just so they can, you know, feel, I guess, safe, comfortable with you. So in the future, when you guys do receive cases and you start contacting your clients or when you are in the circle, just make sure to use use their names, um, just so that it could it could seem more personalized, right? So that's that's the first thing we did wanted to share with you guys. The second one, um, again, not a lot of you did this, but just a couple of you that we we do want to point it out, and that is uh, making assumptions instead of actually knowing or expressing um, Angel or Jordan's feelings. And I think, let me see if she's here. Is Darby here? Yes, Darby is here. Okay, so Darby did a great job. And I'll give you a, a second, Darby, in a bit for you to share your experience. But we were able to to see in her in her case in her mock circle she was referring to angel you know like you could tell that she had a connection with with angel and she didn't make any assumptions she wasn't saying something like i think angel feels like this you know she was very confident about it she was saying angel feels so and so and so so um darby if you could just share a little about your experience Yes, yeah, so I first reached out to Angel through text to set up a time to call. And I think the phone call was what really helped my confidence with it because that way I was able to get like all the information I could in one go. And I wrote like all, everything down that I thought was necessary for the case. And I think that's really helped me too. And like right before I also like wrote down some like key notes so I didn't like forget anything like on the spot, like what I wanted the resolution to be, what I talked about with the community advocate. And again, I also think, cause I also talked with my community advocate and I think that really helped as well. Cause we were able to kind of get 
an idea of what the victim wanted and what the referred youth wanted before. And so it was easier to kind of go through the whole situation. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Darby. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about this, about that section? No? Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, yeah. Um, well, thank you, Darby. I hope the rest of you could just, you know, take that as a as a tip in the future. Um, just again with my example of the doctor, you don't want the doctor to tell the nurse or the pharmacist, well, I think Consuelo needs this type of medication. No, right? You want the doctor to be uh, Consuelo needs this medication. So it's, there's no there's no assumptions. Um, and the way you do that is just talking, talking to your referred youth, the victim, um, just to gain all that clarity. Uh, Shido? Yeah, thanks, Consuelo. I kind of had a, I don't know if the strategy was employed by all of you, but I would recommend that you also do this. Because, you know, like Consuelo said, really what you're doing there is representing your client in a sense, being their advocate is being their voice. Yeah. So I've heard some of you say, okay, I'm, you know, I got everything that I needed. I just wanted to make sure and tell me if this was or was not the case for you. Once they've shared their story with you, I encourage you all to ask follow-up questions, ones that don't seem too intrusive, especially if something seemed unclear to you, because you want to make sure what you say in the circle is accurate, because there could be in some instances where if your, you know, youth Ad, uh, your youth referred youth is feeling shy or as it is feeling uncomfortable in the circle you may say something that not may not be accurate and they won't correct you and that's you know that's not really working in their favor or doing a good job of representing them right so what you want to really do is if you have follow-up questions and stuff you want to ask them about did I catch that right and before you hang up always check for understanding which is basically doing a quick summary of your notes and going hey, you know, do you mind if I just kind of, re, you know, recap what you told me so I make sure that I have it right? Because they're going to be in a much better position to further elaborate or correct you if you don't have it right at that point versus a circle. So um, did anyone also find themselves needing to use that approach? Although I know this was a mock circle, so you may not have had to use it. Okay, cool. I will take your silence as a, you didn't ask for that kind of clarification. But once you start signing up for the real cases, just make a mental note to do a quick recap with them as well, and then give them an opportunity to also ask you questions. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Shido. Okay, next one, next point is, um, there has been no previous contact or communication with referred youth victim and or the opposing advocate. So this one, again, not the majority of you, but there were a couple of you that right off the bat, we could tell that you did not prepare or you did not contact your referred youth or victim or, you know, communicated with the opposing counsel. That is just something that's evident that we could see right away. So please do not do this in the real cases, just because it is, you're basically going to affect a person's life. And if you don't prepare for it, then it could be a little harmful for, for them. Um, okay. And next one. Next one is, again, not the majority of you, but there were a couple of you that were just very nervous. And, you know, you could also kind of see that <laughs> right off the bat. Again, this, this was a mock circle and it was your first time. So we kind of figured and we, we knew a couple of you were going to be um, very nervous for this, but just remember, you have all the necessary skills now to advocate for others. You took this intense six-week course. You were taught by attorneys. 
So you have all the necessary skills to advocate for others. Um, so just have confidence in, in yourself because when you are representing other students, they are actually gonna be more scared than you are. So they're gonna be looking up to you um, and trusting you. So just, just keep that in mind. Let's see, I do want, if we could share an example of Cheeto. Um, I was going to ask them a question, but I also kind of wanted to re-emphasize that this is a circle, right? So this is not a trial hearing. It's not a court process. The point of the circle is for everyone to kind of bring a little bit of their human selves out. Um, and in saying that, it makes it a safe space. That safe space doesn't only extend to the referred youth, but it also extends to you all as youth. So even if you're feeling nervous, that's completely okay, it's all right, but just kind of go into it, acknowledging also that this is a safe space. No one is judging you. You're really, you're there with a the purpose in mind, which is your client, oh, sorry, the referred youth. Um, that's also something we want to, you know, I'm also getting used to it. We want to switch away from that language of client and, you know, use referred youth or use their name specifically in the circles. But in saying that, just remember that you have a purpose in that circle. If you've prepared for it, how you come off naturally will just seem confident because, you know, you're all there kind of as equals. No one person is better than the other. So it's a very non-intimidating setting, if you will. Um, having said that, if you're still feeling nervous because it's only natural to be nervous or use, you know, CCLF staff or your facilitator or come in early before you're, um, restorative justice circle and just do a bit of a practice run with some of the other peers there because we're all learning so don't necessarily feel like you have to have this in your first time volunteering you'll only get better with practice so consider continuing to kind of remain involved and we'll talk a little bit about how to build that confidence in later slides thanks Shido. Okay, I do want to call on two people, um, just because we did we did see when you guys were doing your circle, um, you could clearly tell you had that confidence in you. So if I call you, um, you could just share a couple of tips or some something that you did to prepare yourself for the circle. So the first one, I want to hear from Miranda. Uh, so... Yeah, I was actually pretty nervous coming into the circle, but um, I just kind of, before we started, just told myself, like, I already prepared for this. I talked to this person. I know what I'm doing and just kind of gave myself a little pep talk. And I tried to make sure I didn't go like overboard and start like rambling and things. So anytime I felt like I was kind of steering off track or like repeating myself, I would just stop and just say, like, yeah, so that's how the, um, that's how Jordan feels about the situation and just let the circle continue. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. But look at that. I didn't even know you were nervous. So that's, that's good. We couldn't even tell. So good job, Miranda. Okay. Let's have another person. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Carolina. Yeah, okay, so what I did was um, beforehand, I just made sure that I was very prepared. Um, so one thing that I did that helped a lot was I made like a list of questions and like answers um, that, because I was a community advocate, so just a list of questions that I was going to ask um, Jordan. And then after that, um, I also made a list of like responses and like solutions that I could make, um, which really helped because then I, I felt more prepared and then I felt less nervous at the end. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. One more person. I want to hear from Natalie. Natalie, because we also saw that when you presented your, your case, you also seemed very confident. So I want to hear from Natalie. Um, I was also extremely nervous to do my case, but right before I went up, I talked with my community advocate just to make sure that we both knew what we were, what we had talked about before. 
And I just went through all my notes, reminding myself of what I prepared for the case before I went up. So I made sure that I didn't mess up on anything I was going to say or missed any parts. I just ran through it before I went up there. That's good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Natalie. All righty then. Well, thank you guys for sharing all these tips. Um, this is actually going to be helpful for, for you guys and for us as well, just so we can continue helping you guys in, in, your, in your circles. So now we're going to go to the next slide. And let's see. Okay, so now we're going to be speaking a little about what happens after YRP, what happens after the summer course, right? So now you guys know everyone here, you guys are going to graduate. So what, what happens next, right? So we have three different sections in here. So the first one is CLE, in which Shido is going to share a little about. Then we're going to be talking about cases, how we receive them, how we distribute them to you. And then we're also going to be talking about volunteer hours. So I'm going to hand it over to Shido. Thank you, Consuelo. All right. So CLE stand for continuing legal education. This is a practice that also occurs in the real world for adults and licensed attorneys. And the concept is basically where, because in the legal field, and just like in your case with youth restorative programs, it's going to keep you on your toes, right? And so it's an opportunity for attorneys in the real world and you all as youth advocates to kind of reconvene as a group and refresh some of the skills that you've learned over the summer. Because it was a six-week course, we do not expect you to continually kind of recall these skills at will. And sometimes things change also. Sometimes you might have questions. So it's an opportunity for you all to be within a setting where you can learn from each other and also be coached by our licensed attorneys and facilitators. These continuing legal education classes will be scheduled every month starting post-graduation. So I believe, Consuelo, if I'm not mistaken, starting September. Is that right? Yes, September. Okay, perfect. And the... CLEs or the continuing legal education classes are designed around these areas that students have identified as areas of improvement. And so the mock circles were a really great way. And then this debriefing session also was a really great way for us to get informed on what is it that the skills the students might need to further improve on or what do they want more practice with. And so that's how we'll, that's essentially what will inform our schedule for continuing legal education. Having said that, if you feel as you take on cases that there are certain areas you want to focus on, for sure bring them up with to CCLS staff. Make note of it so that we can organize a CLE specifically for that um, area, whether it's communication skills, whether it's prep, whether it's, you know, how do I do critical inquiry when I speak with the youth that, or the referred youth I'm representing, um, or just anything in general about your participation that you feel you need practice with or you need a refresher with. Um, have I missed anything? Oh yeah, in terms of participation, it is highly encouraged that you try and attend as many CLEs, again, specifically in the areas that you want to improve on, but also outside of those areas because it's when the bigger group comes together. So there are 21 of you graduating on Tuesday, but outside of that, we also have our continuing volunteers, right? The folks that graduated last year and then the year before that. So it's a really great way to kind of build some camaraderie and uh, friendships with those seasoned youth advocates as well, because you will also be working with them. It's not just this group of 21. So um, yeah, I encourage you all to kind of keep an eye out for those CLEs and also be assured that now that you've graduated, we're not pushing you into the deep end for you to sink or swim, that you'll continue to have support throughout your participation in the program. Thanks, Shido. Um, is there any questions about CLEs? Pretty straightforward. 
Okay. All right, so let's talk about the next the next subject. So the next one is cases. So the way we, well, first off, the way re we receive cases, um, we did mention this in the, in orientation, but I will reshare it again, just so you guys are refreshed. Um, but we do receive cases from various schools. It could be from middle schools, high schools, and whenever we receive a case, I will usually send out a mass email to everyone. And we have this form that's called YRP withdrawal policy. So whenever I do send out cases, I'll ask you, if you want a case, please sign this YRP withdrawal policy. And then I will send you the case. So there are a couple of restrictions though. And a couple of you were asking me about, well, if there's a if there's an incident in my in my school, am I going to be able to take on that case? And the question, the answer is no, you are not. We are going to keep everything confidential. So whenever you guys do sign up, I just make sure that you guys don't go to the same school as your as the referred youth or the victim. Um, and then I'll send it to you pretty straightforward. Let's see what else. I will explain a little more about the YRP withdrawal policy in the future, but just know that this policy is, is just strictly for you to commit to the case, right? We understand things happen, uh, but you are going to be able, you know, to change the life of, of a student. You're gonna be advocating for them so we want you to commit to the case and it's usually all it's usually going to be 3 weeks so in those 3 weeks we want you to prepare as much as possible um but yeah we will be talking about this more in person in September when we have uh, a CLE so is there any questions about cases James. I actually have a question for the CLE. So it's so is it a requirement for all of us to take it um post a YRP or is it completely optional? I, I just want to get that uh clear. I okay, I would personally make it a requirement just because you don't want to miss anything that happens or set or is being said in that CLE. And then, well, let's say, let's say this, and this is, this is why I'll tell you it's a requirement. Um, let's say you want a case, but you haven't been attending the last three COEs. So right now, you know, you're, you're kind of unsure of the program, what the rules are, the, the procedures, the policies, everything, right? So if I give you a case, it's going to be completely, you know, difficult for you. But if you're one of the students who attends the COEs every month, um, you take your notes, then you're going to be in solid shape. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay. So I'll give the time over again to Shido now. She's going to be talking about volunteers. Um, so James, thanks for that question also. I mean, if I were to kind of, in other words, with regards to CLEs, think of it as a way for also you to continue remain engaged in the program. Because um, yes, it's also, like I said, another way for you to interact with your peers and keep up to date with what changes are happening in the program. Having said that, in the past, we have had people that have signed up for cases consistently, and so they may have actually missed three CLEs in a row, but they've maintained their engagement in the program through cases, right? So moving forward, also think of how you want to kind of continue um, to engage in the program and make sure you're able to, when you are signing up for cases, how do you present your best self forward? And the CLEs are a great avenue for you to be able to do that. Now, speaking of how to remain involved in the program or opportunities 
to engage with the program. You have your cases, obviously, because that is your role as a youth advocate. Um, you have your CLEs. That's for you to get better as a youth advocate. And then we also have additional volunteer opportunities. And this is specifically, I mean, not specifically, this can be an opportunity for anyone that's looking for additional community service hours. Um, but for some reason, maybe you know, they're, you know, they're not signing up for cases or the times don't work out and whatnot. You can also volunteer with the foundation through just other community outreach that we do. So the foundation actively participates in various events, community uh, awareness raising events about some of our health related and health equity initiatives that we also do. But in addition to that, we also do a lot of cultural events, which some of which can be a lot of fun. Like the photo that you're looking at is when we participated at a trunk or treat event um, in October, which we'll also be doing a little bit of this year. Um, I don't know if Ingrid is in the room, but a shout out to her. We were recently this weekend at the CCSD Family Resource Center for a back to school event that they had, where we talk a little bit about why our, well, we talk about YRP, but also everything else that the foundation does. And Ingrid was an absolute rock star. She helped out. And so, oh, there you are. Well, great. I'm glad you're in the room. I'm glad you're in the room. We truly did appreciate that additional help. But that's also an opportunity for you all to secure your community service hours if your school requires so. Um, and as events come up, you know, Consuela will send you an email. Don't be shy to kind of sign up because if there's a group of us also, it makes the event a lot more fun too. Um, for everyone involved. So keep an eye out for those volunteer opportunities. Thanks, Consuelo. I do see um, Catherine, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering for the CLE, what day of the week would it be like typically? Typically, we try to keep it the second Tuesday of the month but it could be someone's that it, it could, you know, be modified. Um, but yes, the second Tuesday of every month. And uh, what time would that be at? Like 530 still? Yes, in the past we've done it. It's been 530 to 630. Sometimes it's six to six to seven. But usually we, we try to do it after uh, after you guys to school. I see Cadence, you have your hand up as well. Um, so she was talking about like the community. Um, where would we go to like sign up for all those things? Like to go like the awareness things? And I usually send you an email. Um, and then in that email, it, it'll take you, it'll take you to a Google form form and it'll have the list of all the events that we have coming up so I'll usually be sending those out we do have a couple events coming up in this month but I did not send it out to you guys just because you guys are the incoming peer counselors mm -hmm. uh, but if you guys are interested we are having a community health fair event the 28th which is this Friday at the Wana Recreation Center. And where we're gonna be giving them um, back to school, giveaway supplies, a lot of health screening um, for the community. But yeah, if you guys are interested, just let me know and I'll send you the link so you guys could sign up. And then you guys will get a volunteer shirt as well and everything. Um, but yeah, is there any more questions about any of these three topics? Thank you. Okay, cool. Let's continue then. All right. Let's talk about graduation. It's coming up. It's, it's um, next week, next Tuesday. So that's why I wanted you guys to get acquainted with the library where we have the mock circles just because it's literally going to be in the exact same um, building. When you guys were on the way to the large conference room, if, I don't know if you guys saw it, but you guys passed uh, the theater. So there, there is where we're going to be having the um, your graduation ceremony. 
So it starts at 6 p.m., but I would like you guys to be there at least 45 minutes before, just so we can rehearse, um, give you guys your assigned seat and everything, right? So take note of that. Dress code is semi-formal. Just please don't, I know some of you love Crocs, but please don't wear your Crocs to graduation. Um, invitations, you guys see the invitation in the next slide and then I'll share it with you guys, but you guys can invite your friends, your family, anyone you want. Um, the theater is, it's huge. So you can invite as much people as you want. So do take advantage of that. Let's see, um, speakers. So we are going to have a couple of you speak and we've actually already selected those. So um, for those two peer counselors, peer advocates that are speaking, just remember it's uh, two to three minutes. And if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any questions, just continue to email me. Um, let's see. Next one, we are also going to be having a mentor recognition award. So this means the, the attorney you guys select for the YRP instructor of summer, that's going to be one of the mentor recognition awards. And then we're also going to be presenting an award for the senior attorney of the year. So I am going to ask two of you to help us present those attorneys. Um, so just keep an eye out on your emails because two of you were, will be helping us out on that. So after, after you know, we have all the speakers, the mentor recognition awards, then you guys are going to be sworn in as peer advocates and you guys will take a note. And as you can see, this picture here at the bottom, this is this is you know the oath where you guys just lift up your your right hand and and you take the oath. After the oath is when it comes the certificates. So you guys will be called up. You'll go on the stage. You'll shake everyone's hand. You'll get your certificate, and then you'll go back to your to your seat. Photography. Sorry, Consuelo Trinity had a question about a conflict on the date. I wondered if you could clarify. Um, it's in the chat, but I'll read it out. It's graduation will be on the first. Yes, that's right, Trinity. It will be on the first. Uh, what if there is a conflict on the date? Could you do a Zoom inclusion or are you on your own? Let me speak with Patrick. Let's see what we can do. Uh, but I'll be in touch with you, Trinity. If anything, then yeah, I think we could do a, a Zoom, a Zoom call. But but yeah, I'll I'll be in contact with you. Let's see, Catherine. Um, I have an issue with arriving 45 minutes earlier. I have um mock trial practice until five, and it's about 25 minutes to half an hour away from there so is it okay if I'm not the full 45 minutes early yeah that's fine that's fine okay thank you okay the next one is photography so we are going to be having a professional photographer who is going to be taking your pictures as you get your certificates but you're also more than welcome to have your parents take a, a picture of you, um, you know, and even afterwards, you guys can take some some pictures with with your peers or the attorneys, you know, whoever you want to. So you'll have time for for pictures and all that. And afterwards, we are going to be having a light refreshment. So once, you know, we congratulate you, everything we exit the theater and then just outside there in the theater in the hallway we'll have a little refreshments for you guys okay is there any questions about graduation ceremony swearing in swearing in anything okay all righty then let me just go to the next slide then so this is your graduation invitation. So I'll, I'll be emailing it out to you guys 
just so you guys can use it to send it to your friends, your family, for you guys to spread the word. But I'll be sending this out in a bit. Other than that, are there any questions about graduation, mock circles, after summer course? No? OK. Um, Shido, do you want to add anything else? No, I think you covered everything. Thank you so much. OK. And... Uh, actually, I had a question. Yes. Um, are we going to receive the individualized, like, um, what is it, like, reports on how we did in the mock circles? If you guys want them, yes, I can send it out to you guys. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Do you, are you going to send it out to all of us, or do you want us to, like, email you telling you that we, what we would like it? Let's do that. If you want it, just send me an email and then I'll send it out to you. Okay. Okay. And Patrick, do you have anything else to add? Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, I'm using my phone, so it's kind of hard for me to navigate. Could you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, nothing to add. Just looking forward to next week, and hopefully um, all of you guys could attend. And make sure you guys invite your uh, friends and family. Want to see if we could try to pack that house up, but uh, we're going to do our best. All right, then. So I guess we are done so thank you thank you guys for all of your hard work this summer i know you guys could have you know been somewhere else um swimming or i don't know enjoying your summer in another state enjoying yourself camping you know whatever but you guys were here throughout the whole six weeks so um i am very proud of you guys and i'm very much looking forward to graduation um, so have a good, have a good rest of your day, guys. And if you guys have any other questions, just feel free to send me an email, but we'll be in touch. Alrighty. All right.